we talked to Chris Tuttle, and he, of course, he's in, he's in like Dallas, Fort Worth now. Yeah. And he's like, oh, it's nothing. It's Texas. It's great. We do whatever yeah, we want. Like, they were there. Yeah. Yeah. No, we had a bunch of like societal restrictions, mm -hmm. um, you know, mandatory masking, uh, you know, uh, fax passport if you want to eat at a restaurant or go to a gym. Of course, all the corporate places heavily enforced everything. Okay. Um, it's corporate. That's corporate stance, right? They don't get sued, mm -hmm. right? So they oh, just, no, 100%. Yeah. They just heavily enforce everything. So if you didn't have a Vax passport, you didn't eat at a restaurant for the last four months. You haven't been out. You haven't been to a movie. You haven't been to anything. If you don't have a Vax passport, you cannot go anywhere that's, that's considered a privilege. Um, you can only get like, like go to other so you can go to a hardware store and buy a hammer you can go get groceries but yeah. you can't go anywhere social they uh, they made it huge like it's a massive social penalty so anything fun water park <laughs> anything fun you cannot do without a vax passport um mm -hmm. of course like i said that's very corporately enforced so like mm -hmm. our gym didn't our gym didn't enforce it we, yeah we just put signs up like at the front door must have vax passport but we didn't fucking scan a single one right, right. and um and our members were good and they all got fake ones that they show. But if you scan it, you're, you know, you can't get in if you scan it. Right. But, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, they had that, and, but that's going to be done in three weeks. So, okay. Yeah. So anything to help your psychological state, you had to have. Oh, no, not. Yeah. Yeah. There was a massive societal punishment. Uh, they didn't do anything because the funny thing yeah. was they're like we're doing this so that we don't have to close you down and then two months after they did the vax passport they closed all the restaurants and gyms because they're like oh it's out of control it's out of control yeah they closed all the restaurants and gyms for another three weeks and uh and everyone's like why the fuck do we do this passport then we're gonna close this anyways and they're like oh was, you know yeah they're just it's just was so ridiculous the last two years has just been a massive monty yeah. python skit to me and um and it's so funny, actually, I watched a couple of Monty Python movies, Uh huh. like within the last two years. Yeah. And I'm like, these were made in the fucking seventies and eighties. And they're more relevant than ever. Yeah. It's hilarious to me. So many little yeah. subtle things in there. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. It's I told like Dust, Dustin, don't I tell you, Dustin, you got to turn your, you got to turn your ears on buddy. I can't hear you. So I haven't but even I, said hi to you guys properly. We just been, I yeah. know we start. We just we just go right into it. Start talking about COVID. I like it. I like Get a shadow it. band and make yeah, it happen. Yeah, but yeah. Let's let's put this at the end of the show where you can just sound bleep all the, the right words. But no, man, it's uh, it's been interesting, and uh, I think it's changed everybody. But I try to have a sense of humor about it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I I've told Dustin this. I've told everyone I was on the project with and on the DOD that it's like living in an episode of Curb. Or Seinfeld. It's just yeah. this is yeah, just ridiculous. It's just yeah, over the top. I uh, my the my my girlfriend. Uh, well, we've been together ten years, so she might okay. be called my wife. But right, yeah. She, she says I've become more Larry David than ever in the last two years. Like yes. I'm more there's I'm more Larry David than I've ever. She's like, it's like coming out of your personality. Like she thinks it's you know growing up watching Seinfeld and then of course watching Curb and there's just a little bit of that in me. We could just it, talk about that. <laughs> I mean, the, the other day, the other day we got coffees. The other day we got coffees and I yeah. literally said to her, uh, she, you know, my girlfriend orders and I go, ah, I mean, vanilla bullshit, whatever. And I said it like, cause I knew I'd think it was funny. Yeah. And this guy behind me fucking laughed and I looked and he's like 50. And I'm like, yeah. oh, he gets it. He goes, yeah. vanilla, he gets it. the vanilla yeah. bullshit one. And then like the next day, <laughs> the next day, that clip was on Instagram. Yeah, I saw you post that, yeah. And I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. So I sent it to her and I'm like, this is me. Yeah. She's like, yep, yeah, that's you. Yeah. But have I, you I gotten... think it's... Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Go, Dustin. What's up? I would think it's just life goes on and you start getting, I want to say it's cynical, but all those references and stuff like that seem more true to life. Like those seem like not realistic shows that people were to watch them, but it's like, no, that is the most true to life settings. If you're someone who starts to like, I think it's not giving a fuck as you get older and stuff, then yeah. it's like, I don't, I don't, I don't care. I'm just, I, it's totally appropriate to act like that because it's like you start picking out those crazy nuances of, of people and you're like, is this real life? Are we yeah. like, what is going on? And you can't help but respond it, in, in ways like those shows are written because like mm -hmm. this is as close to real life as we're getting. Yeah. And I used to, I, I know sometimes, you know, when you're about, I don't know, a lot of times I have this inner conversation with myself. I don't know if this is normal at all, <laughs> but <clears throat> I'll, I'll think of a reference like that one, vanilla bullshit. Yeah. And 
I'll think to myself for a split second, okay, is anyone else going to get this? And sometimes uh, you're in company yep. where you're like, oh, this is, this will be a joke. I'm delivering yeah, this. Sure. Right. And then there's other times where you're like, there's no one around who's going to get this, but I'm going to say it anyways. For me. myself. Yes. <laughs> yes. For me. Yeah. Some people don't do this though, but I know exactly what you're doing. Do. Like just for me to entertain myself and get myself through my day yes. dealing with my problems. <laughs> I'm going to tell this barista. Yeah. Vanilla bullshit, whatever, whatever you got. You know, yep. and then I'm going to be like, I don't know, just walking back to my car. I'm going to be like, that was pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. But and you see, at the, at the end of the day, though, if you, you tell a barista that and she hears that and she knows it, she gets a good laugh out of it. It elevates her. You never if she know. doesn't, you never know. she feels maybe like, oh, I can be creative today. Right. I can do whatever I want. Fun. And you have a story yeah. for the rest of the day. If you deliver it right, it can still be like, sure. it's not like you're like ruining their day or confusing yeah. them, right? It's like, <laughs> you know, you do it right. And it's, you know, it just floats by as a comment, right? But I got lucky the other day because it's always, so that's like when you win the lottery, when you drop it, thinking no one's going to notice. Yeah. And then there's a guy a behind you chuckles standard. and you're like, ah, oh, fuck. It's like a little casino. It's a little uh, dopamine. Like when you open your yeah. uh, Instagram, you two cherries. And you got some yeah. DMs. Yeah. yeah. You know? A little yeah. dose of uh, of the right, uh, you know, neurotransmitters make you feel like you entertain. Like I'm a stand up comic. Yeah, that's it. Ten you know, <laughs> I should try amateur night. I'm really this close. Yeah, yeah. What did you yeah. did you enjoy the, the the last season of Curb? So I haven't finished it. Oh, okay. I'm halfway through. Oh, I, mean, I won't. Okay. Yeah, it it so far. Okay. So far, I'm enjoying it. They're all a lot older. Did you notice that? Yeah. Oh, there yeah. There's a big gap. There's a time gap. Just a little bit. Just 15 years. <laughs> there is a time gap on this last season. Yeah, yeah. So I noticed that for sure. Yeah. You know, Jeff Garland lost a bunch more weight. Yep. So, and though Ted Danson just seems to just maybe thin his hair, but he just doesn't change. Right. Ted. Ted's, Ted's the one spending a lot of money. He's pretty sharp. Ted's, He's probably, Rob Ted's probably TRT in. He's probably oh, GH in. Yeah. He's got the great skincare product, $300 creams he puts on every night. And then Richard Lewis looks like Keith Richards. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I didn't think about that. He's getting, he almost looks like a gremlin now. (laughs) I mean, just. And he's got the hunchback like Mick Mars. Yeah. 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 He's fucked up. Oh, but so great. All those Mel Brooks movies. He was so great. I'm I'm glad you guys appreciate that. It's a good way to open the show. Great way. It's great. So now that we're actually moving on from. You, you see, I felt like I was, I was like, oh my God, can I even go on this show? They're going to be talking about strength blocks and periodization. And I'm just going to be like, oh, we can, train we, real hard, man. Just go hard in the paint. I, yeah. I, all my questions related to BMX riding. That's, <laughs> I got a couple on that. We, we like to trick people. We like to get people on here and think we're professionals. And then uh, we have to derail them as quickly as we can. That's fine. That's fine. Your Chris Tuttle episode is great, by the way. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, pure curiosity, has he changed his Instagram? Oh, shit. I didn't notice. Okay. Like, did he lose it? Is one of those guys that got I, hacked or something? I, I, oh, I hope not. He was probably telling the truth. That's probably, probably what happened. That's what that's happens probably now. Like, you, that you IFBB put really pro, good, Crystal? thoughtful content, and then they, re- they remove you. <laughs> hmm. Like, can you, can you find his? I got Tuttle Nutrition, but that's yeah. like him and Alexia, right? Mm-hmm. But his actual, actual, I got to contact him, see if I got, if he got hacked or I got to change over everything to like nutrition because I tagged right. everything. For him. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fucked up. A lot of people had Instagram problems lately, eh? Right. I mean, Hollingshead got hacked. Yeah. Sergio got hacked. Yeah. All those fucking Bitcoin scammer people. Yeah. 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 It's a good thing I don't believe in that. Well, it's too bad people click on shit that they get sent. This yeah. is also true. Like, oh, I check out this link, bro. And you're like, oh. Oh, yeah. Like, I do not open any Ooh. links. Like, fuck. People send me links. I'm sorry, dude. Yeah. I guess I'm not in on this joke. It's, yeah. You, you probably you know. right. not on it. Yeah. So, it might be a whole psyop, but. Oh, it might. It might be a dark state thing. Deep state. <laughs> might be. I, I'm pretty certain on a lot of them. The Bitcoin is either. I mean, I, I could go this way with everything. It's either like, it, it all makes sense or it doesn't. But Bitcoin could be the greatest psyop of all time. <laughs> that we don't something? know where it came from the guy died it's unhackable it's perfect everyone needs to start turning into this i was like i, I that you read that in a site you see that in a movie or you read it in a book you're like oh that's that's nonsense 
Hope that's very, real life, people. Isn't it very interesting? Reality is stranger than fiction. I mean, yeah. Tom Brady and Giselle Bunchen do it. Can't be wrong. <laughs> it can't be. I, I mean, <laughs> so I, I, I loved all the memes about him coming out of retirement because oh of the my kids. Gosh. Oh, yeah. well, you know, that's good. why there was some gold there. There's some yeah. real gold there. I mean, you spend yeah. six weeks and like, did you like Ron, how much do you, do you watch like American, I mean, American, we're pretty much the same continent. We are on the same continent, but what do you watch football? Yeah. So okay. I, I'm not, I'm not like an NFL channel guy. I'm not yeah, subscribed, yeah. I, but I, I'm, I follow the, a lot of Instagram NFL accounts and, you know, I, I, I'm the type of guy that, um, probably a terrible hated fan by hardcore fans but i'm the type of guy that likes to scroll through the carousel to see all the best plot passes of the week the oh, best yeah. tackles of the week yeah. and you yeah. know uh, there'll be a feature this jerome betis feature came through the other day and oh. it was like and best plays ever and jerome like, oh, betis. Oh. so i'm that type oh. of fan but yeah. i'm not like uh oh my god the cardinals traded so and so what's what's going to happen to their secondary oh fuck okay it, no. <laughs> no, right. no, no. so now that we've <laughs> He's a normal. That's that's the right kind of fan, in my opinion. You go okay, deeper. Okay. You go deeper than that, and and uh, I, I get concerned. Yeah, well, <laughs> one of his teammates, Rob Nukovich, who was like a defensive end, he, outside linebacker. He he was on like a, a morning show, and he said, "Yeah, here's the situation. When I retired, my first week, I'm putting dishes away, and my wife tells me at some point, no, the di- those dishes go in that cabinet.' I'm like, oh, okay, dear, whatever. And then the next day, I'm folding a, a fitted sheet, like that's possible." folding it she said no yes what are you doing you're, you're doing it wrong you do it like this blah blah blah, blah. and he said at that moment i'm coming back i'm yeah. retiring there <laughs> was a tom brady moment he's like no <laughs> i'm not putting the pants in that drawer i'm going back oh to the buccaneers yeah I'm yeah out. yeah 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 you can handle it yourself yeah your yeah. sister's coming to stay oh. i'm uh, i'm going on the road oh no the mother-in-law oh time it's time <laughs> oh it's time <laughs> so now that we've got <laughs> All the, all that out of the way. <laughs> we'll swing so, back around to it. Right, right. So I'm Joe. This is Dustin. We we both met when we were on the DOD project, and we were both strength coaches for I was at Fort Knox. Dustin was at JBLM out in Washington, actually not far from you. And so you have we to were, help me out. What's JBLM as a Canadian? Joint Dustin. base Lewis McCord. Oh, okay. it's just the, it's just the biggest military base basically on this west coast now i think because we've consolidated a lot but yeah so when you say joint you mean there's marines air force army so like it's air, air force army yeah air, air force, force army, army. Yep. okay yep. okay yeah and then fort knox is army fort knox is and army gold. and a lot of european so operation and a lot all like the hrc so human resources right like healthcare right. and everything for the army is there and of course as you know sean connery stopped a gold you know heist there <clears throat> so, you know that's also mm. Still my favorite storyline of all the Bonds. It's a phenomenal storyline. All right, now blow we're going the, down this hole. I know. It's like, a phenomenal blow up, blow up the news. ask him, Joe. You know, he wasn't it, even going to steal a single no, bar. No, wasn't a steal thing. He nope. wasn't just going to irradiate the gold for 50 yeah. years. I loved it. As a kid, I was like, this is the perfect scam. You know, he doesn't have to lift a finger. I love the efficiency. It, it is until you get there and you realize that's not possible. There's, there's no way. And, and you realize, you've seen Fort Knox, you realize it's not even like that. Once you've driven on it, you played golf literally 200 yards from the vault. And you realize, oh, that's, there's no way. There's no way anyone's getting there's in there. There's no way you're going you're gonna to fly, you know, five hot chicks over it, distributing NXC nerve gas, knocking out the entire base, rolling in there, opening the door. I don't know how that's possible. Right, and right. then you're going to put a nuke in there. Like, that's not happening. Yeah. Even in the 60s, you're skeptical? No, no. Even the 60s. <laughs> Ain't gonna happen. I, dis- that- I disagree. I think it could happen right now. I, well, there's the tank. All to find out, there. there's nothing in there. There's no no. <laughs> yeah, so when I was greatest. there, I was a strength coach for the only active element at Fort Knox. Everything else is just like inactive, like sp- like brass, like general colonel level decision making people. So right, the tank division's gone now. Actually, so my last four months on the project, I was down at Fort Bliss, which is basically Juarez, and that's where the tank division is now. And I got to work with those guys. And that's a whole other, that's a whole other level. If that was smart, there, that'd be smarter different. to have them there anyway. I mean, if, if well, next to Juarez, threaten us, it's going to be the cartel that has their own little bit. armored Toyota trucks. So we should probably put the tanks closer to that. Right, right. You know yeah. what I mean? The tank guys are a different breed too. Mm-hmm. I know they, a little uh, bit of, I know they're like, well, they love to train too, don't they? Half of them do. Half of them do. Okay. Because here's, here's a theory on that. 
this is what they say. I'm either going to kill someone with a, with a push of a button, like a video game from, you know, two, three clicks out, or I'm going to die because I'm in a metal box of death. I'm right. in a coffin with an escape hatch. Right. That's, that's their mentality. It's like, why am I, why do I need to bench 300 pounds? Coach, tell me like, it's because it's cool. To make everyone and you eventually get them. Small if anything, you just have to be able to run fast. If you have, you yeah. actually have to get out of your tank. Yeah. yeah. It's a hand-to-hand combat thing. Cause you get out. You're, yeah. There's probably someone within, you know, striking distance of you. So. Wow. I mean, legitimately, that's why we use the hex bar deadlift is because of that movement right there, pulling a body out of a tank. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 That's the reference. That's the reference that, that you see on everything. It's like, why do we do this mm-hmm. in training? You always see a body being pulled out of a tank. Like, so, so like hex bar deadlift, the guy out of the tank. So what do the tank guys think of the greatest tank movie of all time, Fury? <clears throat> So well, they all got haircuts like Brad Pitt, so that tells you enough. Do you okay? So Justin, do you have any tank people at JB? Uh, strikers. We have striker units. So okay, it's strikers. A, it's okay. a, yeah, it's a yeah, pull off the treads and put on giant mud tires and put oh, them up okay. to like 80, 80. I don't know how fast they go, they go fast. Yeah. So Fuck. everyone I worked with that was in that tank division with Fury, it was either an extreme love or an extreme hate, much akin to the film Hurt Locker, despite right. the Ac- multiple Academy Award winning over James Cameron by his ex-wife. Yeah. They love Those it or were hate Marines, it. right? Hurt Locker was Marines? Yes, like yeah. bomb disposal. Yeah. And, um, so they'll watch it, and when they actually watch it, like all the movements they're doing, I've been told that for that age of tank, very well, I guess you call it choreographing, yeah. you, the tank battles, which I enjoy. I like Hunt for Red October. That's one of my favorite movies. Like, so those like submarine games yeah. so yeah. watching what actually happens in a tank was pretty cool they didn't care for the ending right yeah, because in reality you just set a bunch of booby traps get 100 meters out watch the booby traps go off open fire take as many as you can and then just start yeah. like hopping back 50 to 100 meters taking more out as you possibly can so the, the ending was kind of confusing for the majority of people but I, I don't know i think it was a little over the top for a lot of people right right it was awesome though i, I enjoyed yeah. it I mean, As a person who knows nothing about tanks, I was convinced. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Can I mean, that's the point. That? Okay. Well, can you watch that late at night before you go to bed? Is that a before bed movie for you? Because I can't watch that before I go to bed, or I just I can't sleep. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I'm a good sleeper. Oh. I watch a yeah. I'm a good sleeper. I, I watch I, pretty much everything I watch is late at night. So okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. unless I'm on a plane. Oh. <laughs> and that so, does yeah. that does happen. So. I got I to gotta lead in with this with, so outside of, if you were looking at the greatest progressive overload gurus of all time, like I don't know how you'd rank them. I know you and Dante Trudell are really tight. You know, Arthur Jones was like, you know, the, I guess you could say the beginner of it, if you will. Right, the idea you, sort of, yeah. Yeah, and now after that, in my mind, you're definitely one of the high disciples. Well, I, I appreciate that. I. I, I guess it just sort of, you know, I've been training pretty much the same style my whole life, like 30 years. I think progressive overload, essentially the concept of it, it's an absolutely necessary and it's a natural, naturally occurring concept. Like it's all about efficiency. What's the minimum amount of work you have to do to create the adaptation response? Mm-hmm. The growth of the muscle cell, the increase of the size of the muscle cell. And also too, progressive overload. The funny thing about it is you're training for muscle mass through strength increase. You're not right. training for strength. Like I know you essentially are, you're writing your number in your notebook, but that's not the end goal. Right. The end goal <laughs> is to get the muscle to grow because it's forced to grow because it's cross cross-sectional area cannot generate any more power it has to adapt and get bigger and the cross-sectional area increases eventually you know and um so that's the goal but yet you're training for strength it's so it's sort of like an it's an interesting thing you know you're trying to get the side effect is essentially what you're doing yeah and um and i think it just comes from efficiency you know like you take a hundred thousand people and you put them on you know four sets of eight four exercises per body part, you know, the typical like generic flex magazine workout. How many good bodybuilders do you get? 
don't know, if you put 100,000 people on that workout and you just let them do it for 10 years, the typical average Joe Blow volume stuff that most people do, how many good bodybuilders do you get? 20. You, you take, <laughs> yeah, 20, right? Yeah. You take 100,000 people, you put them all on progressive resistance where they're tracking and logging everything, not worried about volume, worried about performance in the gym and execution of every rep and all that, the progressive overload principles. And you let them do that for 10 years. How many good bodybuilders do you get? Is it more than 20? Somewhere. Right? It still might only be 30. But it's but, more. But yeah. that just shows you how hard bodybuilding is. That's it. Well, yeah. I and mean, when you say that, I'm thinking like, how many Phil Heaths come out of that 100,000? Right. So it's just for people that are thinking about this, like you're not talking, you know, somebody that, One, we're not talking yeah. average. How many, how many of the professionals do you get out of 100,000? Yeah, yeah. You know, you, it's, it's like putting on extraordinary amounts of muscle mass is really fucking hard. We, we talk as if it's something that we can just do. And it's not like some people can't do it like they can, but you know what I mean? They yeah. just can't accumulate yeah. Yeah. any sort of enough muscle tissue to be a bodybuilder. Right. So, and, I mean, everyone can gain an enormous amount of muscle. I think everyone can double the amount of muscle on the body. I'd be willing to, I'd be willing to, to go with that. Cause I've had you know, some, what I would call as a hard gainer, you know, that are like naturally their frame sits at like as a male even like around 100 pounds right 120 somewhere in that range yeah i i think well i mean yeah you can probably be easily double that or at least 100 yeah, percent stronger i think strength's easier than muscle size yes but. yes um so when i say double the amount of muscle i i guess your lean body mass would be a bit much because that would include more i'm just thinking like you know think of how big the average 150 pound dude's bicep is I mean, he can easily double the size of his yeah, bicep. Yeah. Yes. Right. The That's actual muscle. Reference. Like yep. you just put it on a scale, like a chicken breast. He could easily in like ten years, he could easily double. Like if he yeah. uh, puts does his thing, but that's still not enough for him to even look impressive. Most people, if they double their muscle mass, they just look like they work out now. Right. You know, like <laughs> yeah. yeah, bubbly bodybuilders. It's not something you just make with training. There's like so many other things that have to be in place, but I still think that progressive overload will find more of them than just generic bro training you know typical volume stuff mm -hmm. um i also too maybe it's because when you train with progressive overload it leads you down other paths <clears throat> yes looking for efficiency and maximization of intensity and all these concepts that then lead to like better like you know what i mean it all yes. adds up it's not like it's just the solution yeah well it's comprehension i mean uh, the some of the absolute studs of all time in bodybuilding i would venture to say they have above average iqs they it's not just work hard there's a lot of other stuff going on like mentally they are put together in a way that doesn't have anything to do with like their genetic muscle potential but mentally they were able to gather the concepts understand them and own that knowledge there's a lot more going on there than people give it credit for on the mental side of things like I've, mm -hmm. I've met stupid bodybuilders. Those are the ones that only follow bro training and have really great genetics and never learn a thing over 10 years. Those people exist for sure. Yeah. But the, the greats, I think what you would sort out in that hundred thousand kind of example that you give that 10 that you get out of that, I would venture to say they're also above average, like, like just intelligence wise in a too. lot of ways in a lot of ways yeah. yeah emotionally intelligent can handle stress management like it's not there's a lot going on there there's a lot going on there there's um there's i mean people don't talk enough about the mental stuff i mean everyone wants to follow like well what what training hey can you help me with my training program can you help me with my training program i'm like what's the point i don't i've seen you train mm -hmm. like I see you kind of casually training, you know? Um, I mean, yeah, you got to have fun in the gym. Of course. I say hi to people. I, mm -hmm. Hey man, good to see you, man. How's it? It's good to see you. Good to see you off your crutches. You know, like I say yeah, stuff yeah. to people while I'm walking around the gym, I own the gym. I mean, I fucking, you know, and I'm retired, yeah. but, but, but yeah, for the most part, like your hat's not low enough. Your headphones <laughs> are out too often. I don't see you like seriously contemplating life before your big sets. You know, like there should be a moment where 
where you have to like, you know, get ready for this set. And sometimes you see like people like unracking bars while they're laughing. You yeah. know, you already know it's not going to yeah, work. But, uh, yeah, it'd be a good weekend, you know. Yeah. But, like, I could yeah, never can. I just, I, yeah. that's, if you want to look like the guys you think you want to look like, you, you have to, you have to also look at like what's going on in their head. I know it might look like they're, you know, it might look like they're just moving around the gym like other people, but what's really going on, the intent, the mm -hmm. focus, the, all that stuff. It's really important, you know? Yeah. You know, do you come to the gym with butterflies in your stomach on leg day because you're doing hack squats? And you know, like, yes, you know, you know that, you know, yes, yes, two yes. workouts ago, you had eight reps on this hack squat and, and it, you're, you know, you really, really got to get nine this week. And you've been thinking about it for, you know, 10 days since you're, and you really got to do it. And yeah. And you, you're driving to the gym thinking about nine reps, nine reps, nine reps. And first thing that you say to your training partner, when you get to the gym is fuck, <laughs> fucking I, let's do these hacks, you know, like, and, and it's, yeah. if you're not like that, I don't know. I don't know if you're ever going to like, uh, you might win shows. You might win local shows. You might be a good bodybuilder, but I'm just saying most people they're just there's cause there's a bunch of guys out there that were like me and you're not going to beat them. Yep. And I'm not saying like I was a great bodybuilder. I was a mediocre bodybuilder. It took me 20 years to turn pro. But my point is I was going to the gym every single day, especially during prep thinking I'm going to take every fucking placing away from every fucking person I possibly can. Like, I don't like, they might put me fourth, but someone's losing fourth and they're going home with fifth because of me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that was a yeah. mentality. It was just like, take out as many as I possibly yeah. could fight for every inch. You know, the, 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 the speech at the end of every given Sunday mm -hmm. and even Sunday, the, the oh, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, that, that, that's, that's like one of my favorite, moments in any movie of all time right and that's that was always in like all the that was in the football I played it was in it was in when I rode ramps on my bike it was like I was willing like I had some brutal crashes when I used to ski and and ride and um it was it was it was in there from a young age I don't quite know what it was you know it was the right yeah. movies or whatever the right athletes the right things on tv I saw I don't know what it was but um yeah if you don't have that I don't know you know, I mean, Jay Cutler had it. We know oh, that. Oh, yeah. And he could do the volume, too. Yeah. And he was <laughs> more <than that. laughs> Damn. Jay, 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 Jay said some funny stuff to me once. Jay said from, mm -hmm. I'll never forget, Jay, I said, I said, after all the years, what do you think works best? And Jay goes, I don't know. I think you just, just got to be healthy. He's like, from 98 to 2004, I could do fucking anything. He goes, I could train high volume, low volume, six reps, 20 reps. I don't fucking matter. I bury anybody, do any workout, grow on whatever. He's like, I just constant progress, like from 98 to 2004 or five, I could do anything. And if I did nothing hurt, everything was perfect. I was healthy. You know, I was like, yeah, you kind of got a point there. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, plus you're right. Jay Cutler. Right. But, that helps a little bit. But yeah, it, like that's how his, like he wasn't overthinking. He was just fucking giving her. Well, and yeah. the mental maturity at that that spot for him i have to imagine too where it's like you understand you just understand you have good good understanding of yourself what you're doing what smart intensity looks like what your recovery looks like and once you have that knowledge I, that's where that reference point that's why that, that's that's a much better way to put it than you know how arnold used to say i could go into the gym and do one exercise and get more results. I don't doubt that. I don't think it's a cocky thing to say at all, but I think that what Jay's saying is a lot more comprehensive yeah. basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and of course a guy like that, you know how you, um, like the other day I saw a video of a guy, he was on a skateboard with a fucking blindfold. Okay. And he goes off like a five stair drop and does a kick flip and lands it. Mm -hmm. That's with it. A blind, with a blindfold. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And so I thought I just couldn't help it. I'm like, that that's like turning off his targeting computer and using the phone. Oh my god, I was thinking about that. <laughs> that's it. You know what I mean? The, exactly. Yeah. And that's what that's what those advanced yeah. people are saying he just too. Fucking turned putting the, off putting his putting the black shield down. How yes. am I supposed to turned fight? off his targeting computer. Yeah. And he just was so in touch with everything of about his world and his existence that he could do that. Yeah. And that's sort of probably 
how Jay was with his recovery and his body and how he felt yep. and every meal that was going through him. Who knows? Maybe he's able to connect with that stuff more than yeah. other people. Right. Yeah. And it's hard for him to put into words because he doesn't know that other people can't do it. Right. Yeah. He's like, well, right. I just, I train more if I feel more recovered. Yeah. Like maybe they're acting like seeing a color that we don't see. Right. Yeah. And you don't know if this is going on in some of these athletes. I mean, like Michael Jordan, like I thought the other, I was talking to someone, I saw a podcast about how we perceive time. Yeah. Wouldn't it be something if Michael Jordan's time is slower? You actually yes. might actually truly be onto something because there's like, been a lot of people at that level that report when they're in the zone in that, in that kind of X state. It's, yeah. He thinks state. everybody's a joke. Yeah. They, I, uh, who, who, out of my way. Up? Yeah. You know, uh, like, you move so yeah. slow. Your feet are so slow. What's wrong with you? NFL linemen, a lot of them talk about that. Like they'd be getting off the ball quicker than other ones because everything's moving slower for them. And it's yeah. like a biological thing. It's even like what you were saying, where you're having those internal monologues with yourself before you do something. I found out some people don't do that. And some people can't do that. Right. If you think about that for a second. It's like, that's like a, that's like a robot I'm dealing with. If they don't have the same abilities that i have and we're doing like we're doing the same activity but i'm able to have this internal dialogue and kind of talk things through and they can't do that like that's kind right. of strange yeah i mean it's that's a the interesting point i have internal dialogue all day long constantly mm -hmm. and i just assume everyone does it i i did too <laughs> i don't know you know but but yeah it just makes me think like you know maybe there i mean there's level but they say there's levels to this shit right yeah yeah <laughs> I mean, who knows how, yeah. how much of a spectrum we're on a spectrum of everything else, you know, yeah. some, some people are brilliant and some people are stupid and maybe that spectrum, you know, it continues to all of those other, you know, difficult to, you know, comprehend sort of things. Yeah, no, no doubt. But that's, yeah, no, that's a good, I just want to run on here, do it, making references to the, the force and things all the time <laughs> right that's my whole life runs through a movie and music filter it's so that's, help fair. It. that's fair that's fair help it no so earlier when you when you described your the idea of approaching a bar and approaching that bar there has to be a different mental state this is something whenever i work with i'm sure like dust you've had this experience as well when we work with athletes and a big thing in our world is box jumping either with resistance or just body weight just to really prime in that concentric power and understanding body position and awareness. And if you ever watch someone do a box jump wrong, sometimes when it gets to that point, once you get to 42 inches, which is the big box, some will take a step forward and all of a sudden they'll, and they'll take a step back and take a step forward and they'll get it. But when they go to a, a back squat or I always use the leg press term because it's just easy because you'll load up all those plates. It's, it's, it's a visual barrier they get to that point and they just get underneath it and do it. I tell them like, listen, if you don't have that apprehension that you just had 30 minutes ago doing a box jump, now that we've gone through our primary moves, now we're onto auxiliary. If you don't have that going into this, there's probably a problem. It's probably not difficult, it's probably not, not taxing your mind enough to make think I have to switch on now. I've got to right. go for it. I mean, coming from West Side Barbell where I can do anything under a squat bar I want. It does not phase me one bit. I can put bands, chains on it, free squat it, box it. I don't care. I do not care. But once I get to a certain point, like I have a nebula leg press, once I get to like 14 plates each side, my hands get clammy. Right. And I have to like take an extra two or three minutes, like think about what I'm about ready to do because it can go wrong really quick. Yeah, you have to respect the weights, man. Yeah. Mm. Yes, yeah. I 100% agree with <laughs> that, that aspect of the mental drive for progressive overload. I mean, you look at, I mean, like a, like a, like a Tom Platt's, or Dorian, like those, those guys didn't, they didn't mess around. No, they and, went to a gym. no, no. I mean, Tom's an interesting guy, but <laughs> yet, you know, Dorian, um, you know, I, I, I mean, Dorian's gotten a lot of credit for what he did, obviously six time, Mr. Olympia, one of the most, you know, loved and respected Mr. Olympias of all time. But I, I still don't think people quite understand what he did at the time. A lot of people right. don't realize what was going on. He, he was the only guy who was saying, no, you guys train wrong. Like it was so, it was such a departure, like a radical departure. I know people had kind of previously dealt with Mike Menser a little bit, but he never yeah. won the Olympia right. and he wasn't like, you know, he wasn't that big, you know, it was the seventies, right. like, yeah. you know, and, and, 
but when Dorian came along and like, he was like blowing up, like getting <clears throat> bigger and bigger and bigger, like from his pro debut to the second night of champions that he won to the first Olympia versus Haney to the first win to the set, the, the second win where he was uh, the third win. And he just like, everyone was like, fuck, this guy is just, he's just piling on muscle and, and like, you know, just like leaving the pack and making everyone try to do what he's doing, you know? Like the funny thing is, is, is Dorian openly says that he never used insulin until the last year he was a pro. Mm -hmm. He used insulin in 96, 97. He was started playing around with insulin. And um, the funny thing was, is everyone else jumped on it in 93, trying to catch him. <laughs> you know, like right. mm -hmm. that's what, that's how, that's how much he was like worrying everyone. Mm -hmm. Like everyone was like worried about like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. And, um, and everyone was trying to train like him and then saying, oh, it doesn't work. Cause they just, you know, obviously you have, I mean, he had it down to a, an art by that point, mm -hmm. you know? So they're just trying one hard set and going, I don't know. It's not working for me, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so it was just such a crazy time. He was just, um, I, I, I have uh, such a huge amount of respect for like trailblazers and people who like one of my favorite quotes is if you want to lead the orchestra, you have to turn your back to the crowd mm -hmm. and, and, and like, that's hard to do. Yeah. Like when there's all these people that have been successful and they do things a certain way, mm -hmm. they're like, fuck, I think, I think it's actually, I think I should actually do this. And it's, mm -hmm. it's really hard. He didn't have any problem at all with it. He didn't give a fuck. Yeah. And, 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 and he, I, that's how I always respected him so much. And, you know, you find yourself sort of thinking like, sometimes I'll think, fuck, I really don't think this is right. I should do this other thing. Mm -hmm. and sometimes that'll even cross my mind i'm like well, dorian would have done that he might have never won an olympia yeah. right no you i know? think it's a great thing to keep it keeping you know soft focus all the time especially as you get kind of goes back to once you start gathering a bunch of knowledge you got to trust your gut more and more and more with everything i mean no, i'm not just talking training but just in life in general like you start developing a pretty strong spidey sense as you do things for a long time and you got to put faith in it yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, the whole uh, Spidey sense or using the force or whatever it is. Um, you know, that's the number one most difficult thing. You can't teach it. And, you know, does it have to be born in you or bred into you or whatever, but you know, there's a certain degree of that. Like I said, maybe if you grow up watching the right movies, <laughs> you know, your dad makes you watch Rocky enough times. We that you know, we should, you'll, we you'll should wanna, maybe ask yeah. that to we people. should have asked that it, I is it to ask that earlier. <laughs> so yeah what, i mean did we all watch star wars and we're like this is a possible thing the thought's been planted because i mean that's where my mind goes now yeah. that you're, i never ever, that's amazing i've never thought of this until you're saying it but yeah that those weird concepts that get planted from you know sci-fi and superhero type stuff and it's like i don't know i remember being a kid really thinking that like i've told joe this i think i talked about this on the podcast one time is uh i was ignorant enough to think that those some of those things were possible when I was like because I, I was interested in like training when I was 10 years old mm -hmm. right. there's some weird things where I was like I don't really I don't have a reference of like what's not possible and Ronnie Coleman's bigger than Superman so who knows right who knows what we're actually capable of you know you get all these crazy things when you're a little kid you don't know and that ignorance is bliss in that sense. I, I, I mean, that's what I was really getting at was oh yeah I was training because I thought that's you just trained and that's what happened yeah, you know? yeah. Which until is, you which, figure out, yeah, yeah, yeah. harder than that. Yeah, I'm glad. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad for those early stages though, where everything's just fun. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know? yes. Yeah. What What age did did you? Because I I know you remember when you first saw it. Everyone does. What age and where were you when you first saw Rocky Four? Oh, so um, oh, I mean, what year would Rocky Four have been? Is it like 80, 89, 89, 89. 89. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would have been in grade nine. Okay. Um, so I wasn't, I, I remember seeing Rocky four and like loving it, obviously. Yeah. Oh yeah. But um, it wasn't one of the movies that made me want to train. I was, oh. th it was Conan the Barbarian that got me. The first oh. one. Yeah. The okay. first one. I All was right. watching the, I was watching the late show with my dad. I was 13. And Conan came on and he was pushing the wheel of pain, you know, that scene yep. where he grows. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, it's massively and, everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And and um, and I go, fuck. And I remember saying, I want to look like that. And my dad goes, Well, it'll take you 10 years to look like that. That guy must be 240 pounds. 
Wow, your dad is like, really astute. <laughs> I was like, really accurate. perfect advice. <laughs> Just to look right. at it, that's probably exactly right. Yeah, he goes, you must be about 240 pounds. It'll take you 10 years to look like that. And he goes, you're going to, and my dad like knows nothing about training, but he knows a lot about hard work. He's a farmer. And he goes, you'd have to lift weights every day of your life to look like that. That's no joke. Like, like no, my dad, bad advice. my dad always spoke with respect about anything anyone else did. Like he never said, oh, it's stupid. Why look like that? Like, you know, like some, some sure. people are yeah, yeah, yeah. like down. My dad, yeah. My dad, my dad looked at that and all my dad saw was hard work. He goes, yeah. You ever see a coal miner? They have big forearms, yeah. big muscular hands, you know, blah, blah, blah. He goes, you know, your, your body, your body will look like what you do. And I was like, yeah. oh, and I remember like my dad knew nothing about training, but he knew that. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and so I remember thinking there were some weights in the basement and, and, uh, and it was funny. I, I, I had the awareness that there were basic exercises that worked your, all your muscle groups. Like I remember, I think there was, you know, those old weeder posters that have like the muscles colored yep. for whatever, mm-hmm. yep. you know, they got the, yep. the, the, and he's like quite hyper muscular, the, the yeah. cartoon man that's working out. Like the lats are all striated yeah, plumed and, out. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, like way unrealistic, but back then you're just like, Oh, that's a good way to show muscles. Right. Yeah. Nowadays they try to tone them down, you know, not to offend anybody. <laughs> yeah. But back then they made this crazy, ridiculous bodybuilder who's like moving the weights. And I remember just thinking that I'd seen those somewhere. I don't know. I don't know what I, but I remember bench press, bent row, shoulder press, squat. That works everything. Right. So I went down and there was a barbell and I did some bench press and bent over rows, some shoulder press. I just stood and did them. I cleaned them up and said, I, I don't know why I understood to do that. And uh, then I would put it on my back and just try to do sets of 20. And then I'd like walk around and then do another couple sets of 20. I didn't have any clue what I was doing. I don't remember reading anything anywhere. I just remember thinking this is this how you lift weights. You just go lift weights and work your body. Yeah. I did that in my basement. And I remember thinking, oh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday would be good. Like, I don't know again where I got that from. And I just did that three times a week for like a couple of months. And um, and I mean, we didn't have much weight. So I don't know, Mm -hmm. I have probably only 75 pounds of weights or something. And then when I turned 14, I joined the gym because you had to be 14 where I lived. And so I turned 14 and joined the gym and then that was it. So, okay. but yeah, that was my, my, my origin. And, and also I'd say, um, I remember, I remember, I think Rambo was probably more of an influence than Rocky for me, as far as Stallone goes. Okay. Yeah. Rambo two. First Rambo two. Oh yeah. He was or Rambo first blood part two, you know, yeah, he was nasty in that the yeah. Soviet chopper. Oh, has yes. the, oh, the bicep the breaking. Ball. Oh yeah. He shoots down the Apache or whatever they're flying course uh, soviet soviet whatever they're flying right. and um anyways that movie probably made me a little bit more like yeah you get fucking ripped you know yeah but i was also a pro wrestler fan you know i watched like ultimate warrior and like fucking the height of the juice consumption like that was my era right like rick rude walking around just shredded and fucking you know what i mean the fucking yes. british bulldog probably yeah. benching 500 at the time and like all those guys you know and so i remember just being like yeah fuck get fucking big like that was my mentality from day one right you know i want to look like the british bulldog i remember every oh, time yeah. he wrestled i was like fuck yeah that's a fucking wrestler you like know? that type yeah. of chest yeah. oh yeah yeah oh yeah he, he bounced the guys off the rope and give them the big jumping power slam oh yep. and i was like ah, that's a finisher yeah, yeah. that's a finisher <laughs> <laughs> you, oh so God. when you joined that gym at 14 what what was or when was your your aha moment that you have to at least add like rep or a pound or kilogram you know per every week or so to it get was, where you had to go yeah well i mean the um i i think from the very very first second the intention was to make massive progress mm-hmm. like i i remember like the first day i went to that gym i went with a couple of my buddies from school i was in grade nine it was like near the end of grade nine and i was 14 and i went to that gym and i was like oh it's a real gym and i'd never been to a real gym like it was like I'd been to Taekwondo. I didn't, I've okay. done four, I did four years of martial arts by that point. So I'd been around men working out, Yeah, yeah. you know? And so I was like, okay, it's a gym with weights, just a different type of gym, I guess. Yeah. And, and um, I remember there was this guy named Norm who was like a local competitor. But I mean, at the time he was like the biggest guy in the gym. He's like, that's the best bodybuilder in the gym. Right. Mm-hmm. 
And I remember he was on the bike and he had like a lumberjack shirt cut off at the arm. And it was like, you know, the threads hanging. And oh, yeah. You know, he had his like ball cap on and he was on the bike riding in his big baggy pants, you know. And I remember I just like walked by to look at him. I was like, we'll go look at this guy. Because they're like, oh, yeah, it's normal over there, you know. And I like walked by to look. And I remember his forearms were just covered in veins. And his face was like, because he was Death getting ready sunken. for Death face, yeah. And I was like, holy fuck, that guy's like freaky, you know? Yeah. And I remember just being like blown away. I was like, that's a bodybuilder, yeah. you know? It's such an impact on a, on a kid yeah. to, to see your first bodybuilder. And there was another dude in the gym named Jason, and he was uh, doing Ben Over Rose. And I remember like, I had been doing Ben Over Rose, right? But he was doing them with like 225. And I was like, holy fuck. Yeah. And I remember his arms were like, his forearms were hanging out too. And they were all veiny and like thick, you know, thick, yeah. big muscular forearms. And I remember he also had crazy calves. He was one of those guys. Like, I remember as a kid, sure. just thinking like, oh my God, I'd eat calves like that. And he was doing bent over rows. And I'll never forget seeing that and thinking like, oh, that's, he's got like a lot of muscle on him, you know? So I was, I was lucky. And there was some like, uh, some like fat dad, drug-free power lifter guys at the gym oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. you know which yep. is because I, I know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> right right there's a mentality that goes with those guys too yep. right and 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 so there's a group of them at the gym and this is back in the early 90s so drug-free power lifting was very like huge like mm -hmm. they were all anti-drug they were all like you know all drug tested power lifting um but they were still really cool. Like I remember I didn't know about drugs yet, so it didn't matter, but I'm just referencing because I know you guys know all these genres of power lifters, right? Yeah. Um, but, uh, but they were like those types of guys. They had meats, a lot of meats. They're always going to a meet, but they would squat five plates. And I was like, holy fuck. And they had chalk on their back and shit. And I was like, mm -hmm. Jesus, those guys are strong. So like the, you know, I didn't start at Planet Fitness. Right. You know? I started in like a blue collar farm oil town of 30,000 people where there was nothing to fucking do yes. and all types of people were at the gym from cops to lawyers to you know fucking local criminals and yeah. uh there was some like heavyweight being thrown around and people yelling and stuff and clouds of chalk and you know it was like you know I guess that gym probably had a huge influence on you know how it all turned out yeah yeah I mean once you once you got to that point and it just kind of escalated and you really just bought into that and you just kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it. Like the, the crux of, like you mentioned really early in the conversation about like you coming on like, oh God, like strength blocks and <laughs> right. know, KPIs and all this stuff. The big conversation that, that Dustin and I like to have is when, you know, coming from West Side, it's, it's all about the auxiliary lifts. 80% minimum auxiliary lifts, you know, squat bench deadlift, maybe 20% total volume. The rest of it's auxiliary. So what we call auxiliary lifts, you call, you know, typical hypertrophy bodybuilding exercises. Right. So everything we want at rest side and whenever I program, it's in three week waves that when you look at either your max effort lifts or your dynamic lifts, they do go up in percentage for three weeks and they drop back down. So we're constantly getting this, this variation of intensity, the back end of it, those auxiliary lifts. If you had in a scenario, a strength athlete who in the morning, goes and does his either max effort or his like power development and then comes to you because he or she needs more muscle mass and, and to understand how to activate that musculature which Dustin and I find very very important especially posterior chain wise how are you handling that athlete if they come into you so they, they've they've done their stuff in the morning you know six seven a.m their heavy work they eat you know three or four times maybe take a little power nap you know they do the Dorian Yates dialysis you know for two hours and then they come into right? <laughs> and then they come into you. What does that look like, progressive overload wise, in, in your system? Like, how does the first couple of weeks look like in comparison to like the, like you know, four through six, and then seven through nine? Right. Well, I mean, I guess I would first of all say I've never worked with anyone who who did like a morning power session. Okay. And then came in to see me. That just would be super uncommon in my world. Okay. Um. I mean, I've read a lot about two a day training, you know, um, I remember for a while there, Ben Pikulski was talking about, um, you know, heavy, you know, movements in the morning and then, you know, volume at night, um, you know, taken from some powerlifting, um, 
literature that he read or some some uh, Olympic athlete literature too about activation and how you can actually be stronger mm -hmm. on the second session because of your neuromuscular you know mm -hmm. spike yeah yeah spike and all that mm -hmm. sort of stuff so that's fascinating to me yeah. but uh, I've never tried to manage that myself um, with with a client but uh, as far as any sort of like periodization strategy I'm I really like to so I guess it's dependent in person to person, obviously, which I hate yes. saying because it's always yes. person to person. But the basic thing is you want to progress on key exercises for your physique. You want to really put the focus on those. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for me, hack squats was like a good leg marker. Um, you know, I'd use all sorts of exercises, but let's just say it's hack squats, uh, your bent over barbell row, your your incline dumbbell press, your, you know, there's these core movements that as a bodybuilder are more core, like, you know, your bench squat dead for a power lifter, yeah. you know? Um, so some people can handle the abuse. Some people's bodies, I guess, depends on how many drugs are on to and their genetics, but some people could come back every single week. Let's say it's leg day. Yeah. And every single week they can start with hack squats and try to beat their previous session. Right. But that's something you have to manage. So some people can't do that. Like they get too beat up. They don't progress Their progression stalls sooner. Um, there's all these mental burnout things. Cause like a lot of recoveries here too. Right. So um, I've found for myself and for a lot of people, every second leg workout, you start with those hacks. Okay. Sure. And it gives you a bit of a mental break. Like let's say they're on a five day rotation where they're doing legs every five days or six day rotation or whatever. You know, six days later, you come back, you don't do hacks at workout. Maybe you squat, maybe you're leg pressing, maybe you mix it up. Maybe you have stuff you're rotating through that workout. So it's never the same. Sure. But then the next leg day, it's fucking hack squats. Sure. And you have to progress. And then the next week you've got some wiggle room. You can maybe do hamstrings first, finish with quads. You could, you know, you can design the word, whatever your other sort of things going on, or you can use other strategies for that workout. Um, maybe you try to try to progress on the leg press again, you know, 20 reps instead of 18 or whatever. Um, but then that next week you're coming back attacks again, and you've always got that date with a hack squat machine that you have to progress on. And, um, and there is going to come a time, maybe, maybe it's the end of your, your eight week blast or, or whatever you're doing, where progression is going to stall out. Maybe you're halfway, maybe a guy's doing a 15 week cycle and mm -hmm. week seven, eight, nine, he makes no progress on the hack. Sure. Well, maybe you switch the hack out now, drop it out. Yeah. You can move it, move it to a second exercise on the other leg day. You can use it differently, you know, approach it mentally differently, take a break from it. Now let's move over. Let's use the pendulum squat. And of course, the first three weeks on the pendulum, you're going to make That's progress nice. because oh, yeah. you're, you're using it as your opening exercise uh -huh. and it's all fresh and you're mentally attacking it. And sometimes you even get like a slingshot effect where you wind up you know, like maybe your previous best on the pendulum ever was four plates for eight. And all of a sudden you're getting four plates for 12 on your opener, like third yeah. weekend to doing pendulum. You're like, fuck, I'm really on a roll here. And, and there's that sort of, uh, yeah. you know, strategy, I guess, mm -hmm. if you want to call it that, I never yeah. considered myself a no. military strategist, but, <laughs> yeah. uh, but you know, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's that sort of stuff of, you know, mental burnout's a big part of it, getting frustrated, um, you do start to eventually, if you progress on an exercise enough times in a, like a, like a 20 week push or like an off season cycle or whatever yeah, the guy's sure. doing, you will develop aches and pains. Like, yeah, sure. and so you got to cycle exercises out before that happens. Try to stay ahead of it. I was terrible of do at doing that. Mm -hmm. That <laughs> was my I, next question. It's <laughs> terrible. So like, there's so many things that I was really, really bad at, and it all boiled down to looking back. It's all just, I was super ridiculously over the top stubborn. Sure. And thought it was a virtue. Yeah. Yeah. But it was probably I am mentally intact and can handle it. Yeah. Because I yeah. stumbled upon that just in an organic way, same way, not necessarily for my clients, but for myself, because I was like, I'm getting strong enough and can go to deep enough water as far as like punishing myself that it's actually taking that long to recover or you can actually put yourself in a hole now I kind of want to go back to that too I'm going to remember it as far as what is my maximal tolerable load before I end up in the hospital and what is how much do I need 
to yeah. stimulate progress. Right, right, that's right. A, that's a weird gray area that I, even the most professionals that you can talk to, that is a debatable, a highly debatable uh, subject. Mm -hmm. But now that, 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 that training schedule that you like, like five, six day rotation where you have one workout, which is, it is a set workout, whether it's legs, chest, whatever you're going to put it. And then is it always like the next one where it's, it's fluid. It's like, have or fun, learn yourself, write it down. Well, yeah, that, well, that's how I approach it sometimes. Um, with other people, it might be a secondary, more structured workout. Okay. Um, but there is like wiggle room there, you know? Yeah. Plus like also too, to be honest, I fucking hate programs. Um, I get it. I yeah. understand why we have them. But, you know, like a lot of my clients train at five o'clock at a busy gym. Yeah. A lot of my clients yeah. have three yeah. kids and a wife at home and they're in a fucking hurry and they can't wait five minutes for the hammer in client. So sure. Doing something yep. Else. Yep. sure. Absolutely. And, That's the reality. Yeah. And the, oh, yeah. the dumb, the dumbbell area is really busy. So I'm grabbing tables. I don't know. Whatever, yep. What do you want me to do? Yep. And I'm, I'm so there, there's a lot of that. Like I understand, <clears throat> you know, I've read some stuff like the perfect literature has us, you know, you know, training, you know, 30 minutes, three times a day for optimal hypertrophy, protein maximization, yeah. you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, well, who has time for this? Like, time for that. like you know, right. I, I've, I've seen people, they're like, oh, I got my new program for my coach, but it's like incredibly difficult for me. I, I, I'm having, would you look at it, please? And I've made the mistake of being like, yeah, sure. Send it <laughs> yeah, yeah, never works out. Never, never ends well. And then they send you like this 10 page Excel spreadsheet. Oh, Excel. With, with or whatever the fuck they're on that's got like, six workouts for each body part all rotated through this this yeah. this this thing that isn't like ultra specified like here's a dude that's trying to put on 50 pounds of muscle so he can look like a bodybuilder one day and they've got him training back every four days because it's a medium weak point legs every three days because it's more of a weak point arms actually measure big enough for the ratio to his calves and neck so we don't need to train that much Crap. like that sort of mentality right it's just fucking ridiculous yeah it's it's and it, it it's just this incredible wave of online coaches who want to brand themselves with gimmicky strategies to try to get 200 clients that they can just punch out this stuff to oh it's been six weeks we've got to change your program no you don't yeah you don't need to change their fucking program yeah um it, it, it's it's uh you know, I get people who talk to me, like I've had guys that, you know, I make the mistake of taking a, a, a client and then he's like, you know, I, 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 like this diet seems very simple. I'm like, yeah, that's the best part about it. Like just do it. And they're like, yeah, it's not stressful. like, but like Milos really likes to have this during his workouts and this, I'm like, yeah, he's also gonna like, what do you want? What do you want? Yeah. Like, are you going to listen to me? Cause like, look at my other 10 clients that you just talked about that you came to me because of. <laughs> Like, so it's just, yeah. you know, and so yeah. I, I, I sometimes think that, you know, I don't want to be that, I, you know, I got some gray coming, but I, I don't want to be the grumpiness to match it too. Yeah, no. trying to make sure yeah. that doesn't happen, but people need to realize that it's not, it's not about, it's not about that. Yeah. yeah that's what you brought up. That. That's really good. Yeah. All those internet or Instagram, like quote unquote, like coaches that they can you know, just select on their Instagram. Like, Oh, I'm a, I'm a coach. I'm going to, I'm going to select that. I've talked to Dustin about this. We actually talked to coach Landau, who's the head strength coach for the Denver Broncos and brought that up too. And it, it, it terrifies all of us in the profession because you can be no one and call yourself that. And if you can project out some, I don't want to say fake, but it very well could be a fake persona. You can get a lot of people. And it's really terrifying because it, it puts the rest of us in a massive hole where we're just put, it's more of a quality game for us. Like we don't really care about how many followers we have. I only work mm -hmm. with five people at a time because it's, yeah. it's, it's a quality game for me. Like, why am I, yeah. why am I pushing to the end? And then you, you, you brought up like that you know, 10 page list with like a giant Excel sheet. And it looks, it looks really sexy because yeah. sex sells, man. Like yeah. it does, but does, well, does, it, does it get it, it done? Also, like, it also tells the client, like, look how special I am. I oh, yeah. need this, like, right. this program is really complicated because I'm special. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm not, I don't, I'm not insulting the client there, but that's no. like, that's like the trigger. That's the trigger. Yeah. 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 Like, wow. Like this is what I need. This is, this is obviously right. the secret. Right. Mm-hmm. It kind of feeds into that sort of stuff. Absolutely. You know? You're preying on human nature and a, and a person that is already primed for the mindset of there has to be a reason why I'm not making progress. So someone has the, has, someone has the cheat codes to this that I can get like someone I'm yeah. just, I haven't found someone thoughtful enough to do it. And like that, what that program you're laying out there, like that's like the squirreliest end of me prepping for a show after 10 years of understanding what responds well and what my weak points are then. And only then with my knowledge base, would I do something like that for myself, pretty much. You can't understand a client, especially online, online no. to write something like that and think that you really nailed it not say that some person's not going to get results from it but that is the that is what you see on like the upper end of working with someone for 10 years that's getting ready for the olympics or or bodybuilding show or something like that and that's even even a pro guy like even even a pro coach dealing with a pro bodybuilder on the olympia stage you probably haven't worked with that person for 10 years like you're still there's still going to be this trial and error from nutrition to training like you don't necessarily know your body adapts you get food intolerances yeah. over the time like your body's changing your age changes it's nonsense to think that you can give someone that i don't know who's more delusional there though the coach or the <laughs> client well there's a lot of yeah there's a wall hey i i mean you guys come from a far more academic background with the strength and conditioning stuff which by the way that's you, so I, I feel like I'm like this, I, I'm like the, I'm like the, the farmhand that was invited on the show here. You guys, I, I, hey, that's see, where I started too, dairy farm and my, myself. I, there you go. I, <laughs> I, 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 I have a lot of respect for strength and conditioning coaches. Like you guys that work with like, you know, these military guys and the, and the, the guys that coach the NFL teams and the, all the strength and conditioning, you know, university stuff like that. Um, that, that stuff I have an immense respect for because it's not my wheelhouse. And, and I mean, I, I'm glad I have something to offer from, you know, the experience in the bodybuilding industry, obviously, and the coaching of, of bodybuilders. But um, one of the main things that is the problem is people don't know when they're stepping out of their wheelhouse and when they should keep their fucking mouth shut, you know? Yeah. So there's these people talking about, you know, like I'm not going to insult people by starting to do Instagram posts about, right you know strength blocks right right yet some people will yeah and they've never like you know you people talking about strength blocks they've never benched 315 right (laughs) and i'm just like oh god i just can't take it no so so there's there's a lot of this stuff where people talking about you know getting shredded glutes when they've never competed or won like getting shredded glutes that's rough man is not (laughs) A mathematical formula oh right. it is not calories in calories out it, it, it well it is but you know what i mean it's yeah, not something yeah. yeah it is just you have to force your fucking body to burn the last amount of fat you got left and there is no math formula that can prepare you for where you have to go to do that ideally it'll happen if you just stick with it and stay disciplined but yeah. sometimes you have to do fucked up shit to get your glutes ripped yeah and you have to be prepared to do some fucked up shit like you know yes God. i, I want to know please use that as the phrase in this in this I, I, I will. You, if you're gonna you get shredded glutes you gotta do Ron some Hartlow. fucked up shit that, that's, <laughs> that's uh, you're great. not we're not debating this i don't ever <laughs> choose those titles but that's the title for this i one, was gonna so ask you another question playing off like this is not your wheelhouse but i, I think it more is but like now you've said that i need to know how many shows <laughs> Did you come in with shredded glutes? And what was the worst, most fucked up shit you ever did to get shredded glutes? Can we just oh. your caffeine our way into that? Yeah. <laughs> well, that certainly helps. Yeah, I, I so I'll tell you, like, um, well, I I was in really I I'm I I somehow and I take it as a massive compliment. I somehow have people say, you know, you're known for your conditioning, and I'm like, well, that's a huge compliment because I was always self conscious that I wasn't good enough in every possible way because us bodybuilders are just so terrible at that and I never really enjoyed my physique during the show Mm -hmm. I was always super critical well how can I hide my one bicep or how can I make this how can I hide that you know ah, try to angle my calf this way so it looks better and there was always this like just it wasn't the funnest experience and looking back I'm amazed at some of the looks I achieved Mm -hmm. like just because I'm like fuck what was I thinking you know um but uh (laughs) <laughs> I, I did 24 
22 or 24 shows. Okay. I'd say I had ripped glutes for probably 15 of them. And the other ones were like, just missed. Like there were some yeah. lines, but like, you know, and I had a good edge and they looked good from the side, but maybe there's a little bit of the back shots, you know, mm-hmm. it was hard. Um, but, but I mean, zero carbs for, you know, days and days on end, uh-huh. the odd time. I learned from Aceto this, like your body. So Aceto has a line. Your body can handle anything for a certain amount of time. Mm-hmm. So, and when you realize that you're like, Ooh, that could get dark. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. there's yeah. been like, you know, three days, zero carbs. And, and I'm not talking like keto diet, zero carbs. I'm talking like you're eating chicken and fish and egg whites right. and zero carbs for like three days. And then you have like, you know, 200 grams of carbs one day, and then you're back to 50 grams for three weeks. And then you're maybe have a 500 gram day. So you don't fucking die. And then you're back to 50 grams for another three weeks before you load for the show. That's your last six weeks. That's how it looks just like rough. Yep. No, 90 minutes, cardio a day. We did two hours on rest days. Um, you know, just slugging it out 2,300 calories when you weigh 280 for like long periods of time. Yeah. You know, so yeah, you know, a lot of clenbuterol, a couple of preps. It probably took too much clen. Took too much. <laughs> probably, oh, you know, a lot of ephedrine and caffeine. Probably took too much ephedrine. Um, you know, there, this, this, that sort of stuff. Like, I did some, did some. I was never a huge dose guy. Like, I never took okay. like my steroid doses. I had a couple of preps where I was dumb, but I didn't even look that great at those shows either. My worst shows. So you learn that too, and. Um, yeah, it's just suffering, long periods of time of suffering, but some people just aren't prepared for that, you know? Yeah. yeah. But the yeah. fucked up problem is I enjoyed the process of like prepping. <laughs> like I never, I never, like I leapt into all my preps. I never like didn't want to do a show, you know? So yeah, I think it's that stoic mentality if you have it and that's wired in you and that's the cloth that you're cut from when all of a sudden you're arbitrarily creating this this hardship for yourself yeah Yeah. some guys get off on it but it helps you focus like there's all this other stuff enough that i mean i know i know it's weird but like you don't know that is going to kick in until you start doing it yeah yeah you know i i i I say you know like i i used to do a lot of my cardio walking outside Mm -hmm. right i just a lot of preps i'd have like a park by my house or whatever and i just fucking you know get up in the morning go for a 40 minute walk a couple laps around the park um or at night, you know, two in the morning, getting home from work, still got 30 minutes to do. And I, I remember sitting on the bench by my front door and like listening to music for like 30 minutes before I could get out the front door. Yeah. And I'm yeah. just sitting there staring at my shoes. I'm like, okay, hey, just another one more song, one more song and I'll get yeah. up. One more song and I'll get up. And I'm like, fuck, okay, one more song and I'll get up. I'm getting psyched up. And like, next thing you know, it's been almost half an hour and, and just like, I just got to get up and on my feet and start walking. And it's that much of a challenge to do it. Yeah. I remember my roommate a couple of times, my best friend, I lived with my best friend for years. And I remember there was a few times where he'd come out of, come out of his room and I'd just be sitting on the stool. He'd be like, are you coming or going? And I go, I'm just about to leave. And he's like, sooner you leave, man. I'm like, yeah, I know. And I just like get up and struggle <laughs> to get out the door, you know? Yeah. But yeah. not once do I ever remember not doing it? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, there's a lot of mental fortitude gained in those moments like that. Yeah. And it's, it's such a, such a yeah. stupid thing to complain about. Oh, you're going for a walk. Yeah. Have you seen what's going on in these countries over here? Right. That's a first yeah. world problem. Right. <laughs> right. That's a first world problem. It, no, it really is. That's why I hate when bodybuilders complain. Right. Because it's, all, it's all arbitrary. Yeah, all exactly. You, just, you don't, no, I'm glad because that's, that's it's kind of one of those, those things that kind of goes unsaid or it's like yeah you just like why why would you like, I don't yeah like i don't tell that a story personal choice any, yeah i don't tell that story for any sort of like no, no. I tell that story to just say like you know your mental state is your reality right yeah. at that moment you might as well be in a third world country mm-hmm. like dealing with some major problem because that's where your mental state is at yeah. the time. you're very you're very selfish you're ultra focused you yep. bubbled in on purpose, like you're bubble wrapped in another world on purpose for a few months. And that's your mental state. So it, when your mental reality is that, that's why it's, you, you know, you, that's all you're dealing with is how difficult yep. that is at the time. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, when I, when I've, at my facility, when I work with like those top end, like, like regional or 
and actually you brought this up earlier where you're talking about anyone's at the top of their profession got to have respect for that person right. like louis simmons once told me like you could be the best literal clown in the world in the industry if you are the best i gotta respect that yeah it's 100 yeah. percent true you make how so, much <laughs> you make how yeah as a clown really you have a malibu yeah. state really kill like, it right. yeah you're killing it keep doing it whenever i'm working with like this top end like like crossfitters a lot of people don't have respect for them but you get to a certain level oh. like a regional games level they're doing some as you said fucked up shit yeah they're doing some crazy stuff yeah, humans just it's just it's just unbelievable the recovery aspect they have to put up or really anti like, like triathlonists or ultra marathonists i'm working with them on stability or just a lot of sled work just to just to strip that posterior chain and we get to like the the last little bit before we start to taper i they like i don't i don't know about this well it's 25 degrees it's columbus ohio it's you know late january you chose to do this this ultra marathons in four and a half weeks. So yeah, it's now yeah, the same, same aspect when it comes to strength and conditioning. I a hundred percent agree. Yeah. Yeah. You just gotta, it's uh, the mental stuff is something that people can't buy mm -hmm. and can't read. And you know, it's uh, like I said, if you didn't grow up on the right movies, you're fucking doomed. Right. That's right. Probably, you, it's probably it. Probably. If you have someone who is, who is healthy, and you've gone through a, a period of time, let's say just for sake of argument, someone completely healthy comes in every six days, can hit a hack all the way through 20 weeks. Just let's just say it. Right. At what point when they start slowing down and everything neutralizes, reps and pounds neutralize out, do you say, okay, now let's go to this shock technique or this one or this one? What are your best shock techniques and which one do you go for first, second, and third? Right. So, I mean, so uh, forced reps, yeah, mm -hmm. I say forced reps are the number one, my number one intensifier. Okay. Simply because they're the, 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 the one everyone does without realizing what they're doing, right? Okay. Get their friend to spot them and give them another rep or yeah. two, right? Yeah. It's, it's the introduction of intensifiers. People don't okay. realize it, but it's our ground level intensifier. You've got a set, you take a set to concentric failure, Yep. The first thing we learned to take that set beyond failure is four straps. Okay. Um, it's, it's, um, it's very, you're very useful. You can always ask someone for a spot. You can, you know, there's, it's common, right? So four straps are something that I keep an eye on right now. I've got a training partner who's trying to get big. He just won his first show a little while ago. Um, we've been training together for a few years. He's made massive progress. He's put on heaps of muscle. He's actually heavier than I am now by a couple pounds. As I get smaller, he gets bigger. And, <laughs> okay. and, uh, and his, his strength is hitting all time highs right now and his off season and stuff. So I've got someone that I'm working through because I train with him every day. So, so like, you know, I get to live vicariously through uh, someone sure. who's currently actually making progress. Right. Yeah. Right. Nice. <laughs> um, so, so, um, you know, his, he's to the point now where, um, you know, he's up to eight plates on the hack and, you know, there's, there's, there's not too much farther. You're going to go on the hack before you take a little bit of a break. Cause like, I'm also very, like, you gotta make sure that your joints are as strong as your muscles. Bodybuilders have a habit of sometimes having these crazy strength gains from, you know, muscle cell size increases and all that when the tendons and ligaments aren't quite ready for stuff okay. you know so you want your strength gains to be slow you don't want giant jumps in right. in in strength like that's why i'm tell people be super careful after a show yeah because you got this yeah. artificial strength and your tendons aren't any fuller no <laughs> right you know your muscles just full of fucking carbs and just maximized and right. you're like oh four plates on the incline and something right. in your shoulder just fucking explodes i've right. seen it dozens of times so, um, I'm all, I'm not I, I, like, you know, some people add a plate to their hack squat real quick and they're like super excited. And I'm like, Ooh, yeah. Careful. Yeah. Like you just put a plate on your hack and like four workouts. Okay. You're obviously mm -hmm. something is really working. You're firing, you're learning this exercise. Maybe your glutes are firing more. You've got a better stance. You're generating more power. That's awesome. But let's also be careful. So maybe for a few weeks we'll push, we'll progress on reps only. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yep. Don't yep, always, I don't always take the poundage. Right. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, you know what? This is heavy enough weight. 
Instead of going for 10 reps with a heavier weight, let's go for 15 at the same weight. So I'm also like, I, I temper that in, which I didn't do mm-hmm. myself. Sure. Um, but I temper that in more now with, with people where I try to get that concept through to them. Um, so it's not always about, you know, progression is, can be reps too. Like, you know, my partner now he's doing like 20 to 30 rep sets on the leg press because we've got enough plates on there, man. Right. Oh yeah. And, 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 you know, I'm not sure adding plates. I mean, we've already been through a couple lower back injuries with him on the leg press. I'm not sure if adding more mm-hmm. plates is something we want to do real quick. So, you know, you have to keep that in mind, a bodybuilder. I know we like to think that bodybuilders are like, you know, like branch Warren, you yeah, know, like right. Mac trucks, yeah. Mac fucking trucks. Until you fall off a horse, but that's not most cool. body. Yeah. Yeah. Most, on camera. most bodybuilders aren't Mac trucks. Yeah. Most bodybuilders are like most of the pros should treat their bodies more like Ferraris mm-hmm. yes. and less like yeah. Mac trucks. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, yeah. Run it hard like, for run it hard on the track. You're a track car. Yeah. Run it hard on the track and then run it hard on the track. Put take, premium gas back in it and let her absolutely. sit. You're a race yep. car. Yeah. You, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? That yes. whole thing. And 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 um and most people can't handle the abuse of of certain types of training. And most people don't grow from certain types of training. Mm-hmm. Um, if you look at training, I'm not, I'm not picking on branch. They, those guys no, are no. fucking, like, oh, yeah. they're incredible. No, no. They're incredible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, people think they train sloppier than they do. I've trained with Johnny a bunch of times. They actually, the only set that is loose with Johnny is like his heavy set. And, mm-hmm. the, you know, and I actually understand the philosophy. It's got to be that one set where you put some pressure on it. That's right. what he always says, right? Yeah. And, You're right. And, and and it goes down to the mentality. You know, all his other sets before that are like really good reps, most of them, and, you know, all that stuff. But if you look at what they're doing, they'll get the weight up, but the whole negative is on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it goes back to the value of the eccentric and the value of, value of the negative. And no matter how you train as a bodybuilder i think if you control the negatives you get a lot of benefit out of what you're doing yeah so that's that just you know the way some guys train actually just kind of pushes how beneficial the negatives are and for them they're doing their negatives with really heavy weights that's it that's yes that's that's the key you nailed it because when you get to an advanced stage one set with 405 going eight seconds on the way down you might only need that like that one set doing that, working up to that, right? That is so much stimulation that you now because yeah. your your central nervous system isn't that much stronger. Like people think that right. everything's growing simultaneously. That might be all the stimulation you need. Yeah. In multiple areas too, because you really feel stuff firing when you're trying to stabilize a weight coming down. That yeah. You didn't realize you can do a lot of movements where you're only kind of working the primary muscles. If you're really getting taxed and controlling both directions, then all of a sudden all this other stuff kicks in. It's like, dude, you're getting so much development that you're a guy doing that is getting so much development out of it. Yeah. Yeah. There's something to be said about certain exercises done a little loose. Sure. You know, and I see that I see them as just another version of that exercise, like standing dumbbell laterals. Yeah. Like I do them perfectly strict now, but I see the value of heavy laterals. Like I did them for years. Mm-hmm. like exploding up with tons of tension and then fighting the negative, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. like, I mean, I mean, it's rough on your shoulder joints for 20 years, but there's a fuckload overload there. And, sure. and so there's, 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 uh, you know, I'm not the type of guy that like, you got to train like this, but I just think it's the principles you have to have a grasp on, you, to, you know, as long as you know, what's going on, like, yeah. you know, there's, yeah. you try to minimize risk absolutely that's why i'm a big believer in in you know primarily very controlled strict stuff yeah. so yeah you know it's funny you bring up the negatives that i dust i know you know this gentleman but ron have you ever heard of a guy named chuck vogelpohl mm-hmm. okay yeah chuck with a flaming toque oh yeah yeah, yeah. no i've yeah I've, I've seen the west side versus the world documentary okay and uh and uh and meadows told me a whole bunch of chuck vogel stories oh i'm sure he's got some some great yeah, amazing amazing it's great so he he wants to part a piece of knowledge when i was there and it was your last typically was deadlift because he was he was savage i mean everything yeah. he did but like you watch him deadlift is like the only reason he didn't deadlift more is because he kept punching walls and had like jacked up hands yeah so that's the only reason like it wasn't any bigger however he once said 
when you get on your max effort, your last single, I mean, your last single where it's just like, it's West Side Barbell, Morning Crew, Savage to the death, and you yeah. get to the top, get everything in place, and you milk that negative for everything it's worth. And when you put it down, you shouldn't hear a fucking thing. Because everyone trains concentric, you know, especially West Side, we use a lot of bands. So speed, you have programming to go fast, controlling the isometric at the top, contracting the glutes. And when you go down, you just milk that thing because no one else is doing that is now giving you eccentric control strength so when you're fighting a weight and you're starting to like gyrate out your body is controlled it will not let that bar dip which is you know and you won't get the lift at that point absolutely and, and dude i think i was the only one there that did that and at my peak i was like 168 167 pounds yeah and i, I could pull with guys to a certain yeah. that were like 220 240 because every time i did that every every time and that, lou, would, lou would enjoy it. like oh watch this here he goes he's gonna control right. that. Yeah. wait a seven yeah, second right. negative oh, no, no. Pounds I'm talking 15 hands. seconds 15 second oh, yeah no no it so, was oh so oh. this i see this all the time in bodybuilding people think the set's over before it's over yeah and so one common one is bent barbell rows so you see guys do bent barbell rows and they'll be going along nice and strict pulling the bar and then you you got that one where there's a little swing right and, and i'm climbing and then and then, yeah, yeah, and then maybe they do one more with a little swing. And then as the bar is up against their belt, they stand up. Yeah. And it's like this weird thing. And I'm like, that's like curling a dumbbell to the top and then grabbing it, putting it on the rack. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, you had it at your belt. You had an opportunity to resist that bar right. all the way to the floor until it stretched your lats out and then you could just suffer for a few seconds and then you put it down yeah. and you didn't do that. What are you thinking? Like you had an opportunity to add a crazy negative to the end of that barbell row set and you, yeah. you threw it away. Yeah. And, and I see people give those little moments up all the time. And I think they matter. Yeah. Do you ever have anyone right. like posterior chain wise, especially, especially back musculature when they're learning how to use their back? whatever working weight they have, take the first one, get down to the bottom, get a contraction and then control that, that contraction out. So they can actually feel it come back right. as opposed to starting at the top. Right. Yeah. The, learning how to train back. I, I find a lot of people do what we used to do. Like it was an old mistake that a lot of people did. I mean, we did it for way too long, but we arched our back way too much on our rowing movements and our pull downs you know, yeah. mm -hmm. and you got a lot of muscle development out of the hard back training we did just because we were, the effort was so high and oh, right, overloading yeah. and you know, you, you can yeah. grow with any sort of movement if you just overload it. Right. But efficiency wise, we weren't maximizing our back development. And now you see people training with a much more neutral spine. Mm -hmm. They're getting much more stretch out of their lats. People yeah. think if they, they, you know, when your back is arched, your lats not longer, right. your lat right. gets longer as your back straightens. Right. Yeah. So they're getting proper stretch, proper squeezes, proper activation, you know, when they, you know, the more you arch on a cable row, the more your traps take the weight out behind you, you know? Right. And, and so they're sitting more flat back with almost their head forward a little bit and rowing more. I have a lot of people do a lot of that stuff and I make them go down to light weights and I, right. I put them on like, you know, like the homemade T bar. Yep. But with like oh, a yeah. straight, but with like a straight handle. Yeah. Yep. I put them on like the old, the old school T bar with a mm -hmm. straight handle where the, and I'll use like the 25 pound plates. Yeah. yeah, they can get all the so way can, in. Yeah. Yeah. They can almost touch the floor and then they just pull it right up to their belt. And I'll try to teach them that movement with like control where they're opening their back and closing it and keeping their spine flat and they're not arching back like that. Yeah. And um, and they always say the same thing. I'm like, oh my God, I'm sore. Like yeah. my fucking back is so pumped. Like, you know, so but learning back is difficult. It's uh People think they know how to train back. It's like the number one worst body part for most people. Yeah. Right. Right. You're, you're speaking specifically in like that, that mid, that low to the mid thoracic lat. Yeah. That's you're getting so much upper back retraction. It just, yeah, yeah. 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 You know what I mean? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. They just don't get that, that bite going on in that, that upper middle part of the lat. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, you know, some exercises are so natural that you can't screw them up. You know, yeah. like if you know how to properly do chin ups and you're you're able to do them, sure. they should be a great back exercise. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. um, I was I was terrible at chin ups. I even when I was light, I swear I had like something wrong with me mechanically. 
Really? It didn't make any sense. Like how I was so strong at other things and so bad at chin-ups. I was just like, oh, fuck, whatever. I'm just not yeah. going to do these. <laughs> <laughs> this is too hard. It's a gymnastic move. I mean, I, I say that, and I'm like, you have 28 inch thighs, so it's not going to be the same thing. Like he's looking at this guy over here. I was like, he has 18 inch thighs. Like it's a different thing. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. It was, it was, it was funny. So um, yeah, you know, uh, just back training, you know, I guess technically there's, you know, well, I guess three or four main elbow placements that I would use, mm -hmm. you know, okay. like by the side, you know, right. out elevated, you know, straight down, down like this, you know, like there's a couple different main uh, elbow placements I put people in, um, which I try to communicate to them. Like, you know, this is what your lat actually does. Yeah. You no, know, this is what your trap actually does. Like it doesn't do this, this thing you think it does, it doesn't do yeah. right. You know, so that sort of thing. Just, and that's how I've always thought about training. Like, what does a muscle do? Like, draw a stick man. Like, mm -hmm. it pulls this mm -hmm. bone. Like, the pec pulls this bone across the front of your body. That's yeah. all it does. Yeah. You know, internally rotates it. So you have to do that with load. Right. That's all. Yeah, and I mean, just, Dorian thought like that. That's how Dorian thought too. Yeah. He's like, but before Anatomy. people were really saying stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's why he didn't believe in like having to switch exercises all the time. He's like, why? That's what your lat does. Right. It's not like you can come with a new exercise to yeah. make the muscle work differently. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, it seems weird. Yeah. When you say it like that, it's like, no, that's what people are trying to do. I think changing the movement is going to make the muscle work in a different plane of motion. It's like, it doesn't No, It's the I'm same. Sorry. Movement. Yeah. You can load you know, it differently. There's... You can get yeah. in a different machine maybe, but the muscle function and where it's going, like you're not changing the connection point. You're not. Yeah. Like yeah. People, yeah. But if you don't know, you might think like, Oh, now if I go to, whatever whatever movement now it's going to work my pec better is like no i mean there's strength curve variations from machine to machine right. obviously mm -hmm. but the function is the same mm -hmm. yeah yeah, no, it's, yeah i mean did you ever i remember hearing this in an interview with jay cutler that when he kind of did a small home gym i think it's even pre-covid the first one of the first machines he bought was a hammer high row because that's the plane of the lat it's like a 35 45 degree pull down right and he loves that machine i think that's why I think all the rage now is that cable, like chest support and high row. Right. And I've been doing that with people and myself forever. And you never touch a pull up or a chip in their life. And they go to do it like six weeks later and they PR it by five reps. Yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. There's certain things that, you know, you, uh, well, I talk about home gyms too, but if, you know, if you're doing a home gym, there's certain things for your body. Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. And, and uh, I mean, back is something back's one of those body parts. You know, if you're going to have a home gym, it's going to be mostly back and leg machines. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. No, because like yeah. other things, you know, the dumbbell rack, you can do a lot of shoulders and chest right. and, mm -hmm. you know, but if you're going to have to put machines in a home gym, like, hey, you need some back and leg stuff for sure. Yeah, 100%. You know, yeah. It. keeping that, that theme going when you're talking about keep saying neutral instead of like being hyper arched. Do right. You ever, do you ever key, like when you go through a workout with someone, bodybuilder, physique, whoever it's going to be, and you're training them, do you guys start? with because like typically when i start with people doing their auxiliaries for bench or for gymnastics movements we always start with understanding how to hold a dead bug hold and then doing some type of banded oblique just because the obliques do tie in to a certain extent with the lower lat right do you start with anything in particular before you even get into a machine or do you just like go right into it let's just steal it out yeah i typically just warm up in the first exercise really really well like okay. I take quite an extensive, like, I think there's a lot of reps in that first exercise. Also just stretching out the first exercise. Like, let's say you're doing back, you know, I'm not just doing a set, standing there doing a set. It's like doing a set, opening up and not stretching. Like I'm trying to stretch right. the lats, but moving your body around, like, yeah. you know, like Full touch your toes motion. and like shoulder rotations, like get moving. Like, are, can you move right now? Cause like, yeah. I mean, there's, there's times where I'm like halfway through my day. And I go to pick something up off the ground. I'm like, holy fuck, I'm stiff. Yeah. And you think, yeah. how did you get halfway through your day without realizing how stiff you were? Like, that's how well, unfrequently we do certain things, you know? Yeah. Right. So just make sure, like, first, ex first exercise, I try to just get the body moving really well. I might do other stuff, like go grab some light dumbbells and do a bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. you know? But I'm not, like, a strategical warm-up guy. But with back, back's one of those body parts, probably more so than anything, where – the first movement is not something I'm primarily focusing on overloading at all. It's, it's, if I do kind of think about maximizing pump, yes. blood flow connection, yeah. 
And that's just because when your lats are super pumped, it's just so much easier, easier. to train them. Yeah. You know what I mean? One yeah. of my, my, my favorite opening exercise for back is a neutral grip shoulder width pull downs with the elbows by the sides Yeah. with a pretty neutral spine. Like you're going to arch a little bit, you know, yeah. but, but it's like a real good quality protein or uh, pull down. Know what you're doing. Yeah. And supersetted with rope pullovers, like rope pull downs. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, just a, a simple superset for the lats just to maximize the pump. Yeah. And, uh, and I mean, once your lats are completely engorged and blown up and you go to like dumbbell rows or something. Oh, you feel like muscle yeah. connection just right yeah. there. Instant. Yeah. And I think that's important, especially with back. A lot of people are bad with connection and you can't see it in a mirror. So they can't get those cues. And, you know, a lot of people just have a hard time. So I, I'd say in that case, it's, it's totally worth giving up the, you know, the, the, yeah. the you know, starting with barbell straight. rows. Right, right, right. Yeah, right, right. Start with your straight movement. Yeah. Plus right. for back, you, you're like, back's another thing, making true progress on your rowing movements. You got to be very patient with yourself because people can easily add some reps just by being sloppier yeah, and, right. and your notebook's all fucked up and your, right. you know, your whole progression is just nonsense. It's not real. And right. so you have to be very, very patient and people train back too heavy, I think for the most part. Yeah. I mean, whatever I I've started with any type of like, it was stiff leg deadlift or deadlift or at barbell row. It's almost like garbage because once you know what back feels like to train it, it's like, why am I doing it? And I'm not Jordan. <laughs> I'm not Jordan Peters. I can't right. put, you know, 500 pounds on a, on a, like a 70 degree row and hit like 10 legit retractive reps. I can't it's do crazy. it. I'm I not know. Corinne either. I can't do that either. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not Corinne either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I know. I know. Honest, you know, I wish. Speaking of ripped glutes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, always. Yeah. Range, you know, range. should ask her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you a, are you a, you mentioned a rope pullover. Are you a machine pullover fan? Well, you we like have. Yeah. So, uh, uh, we got ourselves a Nautilus pullover for the gym, uh, an amazing seventies Nautilus pullover. Yes. Super pullover. Um, I'm, yeah, it's a super pullover. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure what year it is. Uh, okay. I'd have to get a real expert to learn. I, I tried to, I, I tried to look it up at one point and gave up, but, um, we found one on Craigslist guy gave me a killer deal. When the guy found out what gym it was going to, yeah. he, he, he realized he was talking to me and he'd see yeah. my show. He's like, Oh my God, no way. And I was like, <laughs> and he's like, Oh, well, fuck. He goes, I'll give it to you for this price and I'll deliver it. Oh, delivery. Like, oh, that's fucking the best. awesome. That's the so, best. And because he just wanted to come and see the gym. I was going to say, yeah, you get a fanboy delivering stuff and it's like, oh. Yeah, he was awesome, man. He was, an, he was also, he was a cop too. And uh, so he, he delivered it, helped me put it together. He brought it in all cleaned up and everything. And he had the new un, unused plastic fairings for the sides. Oh, wow. Like, oh, he so got like, it so he had padding. Padding. Com, huh? Oh. Yeah, like he got new aftermarket. They, they say Nautilus on them, but they're like replacement ones. Oh, I so know. He took, he took oh. off the banged up ones, put on the nice new ones and everything. And so we got a pullover. Yeah. I, I like the pullover. Um, I'm not sure what year I have, like I said. Some of them are made, I'm sure if your arms are the wrong length, it sucks for you. Okay. But yeah. the way I have it, I, I hold it like this. Mm -hmm. And I drive with my about half elbows, half fingers pulling. Yeah. And I get a great contraction. I never liked dumbbell pullovers. I just thought they were kind of like, you don't have the bottom part of the wrap, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I see guys putting the band on them like Meadows used to, um, mm -hmm. which is cool, but I kind of train when the gym's too busy to do that shit. Yeah. Sure. Fair enough. Cause I mean, Meadows used to, he would like train at Westside in the morning and then he'd go to world gym, which had like all nebula stuff at the time. Yeah. And he would, he would crush it there for like two hours with like a handful mm -hmm. of guys from yeah. Westside too. Yeah. And I, because you brought that up, I have to go into a question. I always ask people, especially like yourself, like Chris Tuttle, Mike Van Wick. And I'm a really big a gym equipment connoisseur. And I, I really enjoy vintage Nautilus stuff. And I got to ask, I know you, you basically live what Dustin and I would call our fantasy life in which you're a sponsored athlete. And then they, they send you to the best <laughs> gyms in the world to, to go through and like nitpick and see all these great pieces and then train there. And it's all, it's all paid for. It's like yeah, a, a fantasy. So Pretty crazy. I got to ask two quick questions. One, of all the gyms you've been to on the show, Mutant on a Mission, if you had to take that one, you can't say West Coast Iron. Yeah. Take that one gym <laughs> and that's your, just your gym for the rest of your life. Which one would it be and why? That's part one of this question. Uh, you know, like, am I just going to train there? Yeah. 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 with the people that are there and everything the atmosphere oh, that's that's an interesting okay, like, you can pick your own people no you that's, can pick okay. your own people and bring them there 
We'll pick am your I own picking my own people, or am I as, just going to go to that as, gym? As long as we're invited, you can pick your own people and the gym. <laughs> that's very good. Because you know, I mean, that's a big deal. That's a big There's, atmosphere. Is a big atmosphere piece. is a big deal, big especially piece. if yeah. you know you're going to be there for your rest of your life. I'd train in a freaking dungeon, yeah. holes in the wall with shitty, rusty equipment. If I knew the crew is going to, you know, be yeah, there. man, you know, yeah. um, I've been to some great gyms, like you know. Bev's powerhouse, real awesome gym. What a leg room they got there. You oh, know, everyone yeah. walking around. And yeah. I remember Robin Dana's Warhouse when they had that one in Pennsylvania. The that was one. nasty. It was an awesome I gym. I cannot man. believe they got rid of that. They did that upright. And oh. um, you know, super training, the the, the powerhouse Montanary yeah. brothers. Yep. Um, you know, quads in Chicago and like um, and there's so many great gyms, you know, and then there's like little gyms like USA gym that um chuck sano runs in chicago yeah like what a great gym just small little like Neat hardcore, pieces. Yeah. but just really great atmosphere bodybuilding all over the walls and stuff like yeah. that just and then there's like collectors gyms it's like a genre there's been like five <laughs> or six of them that i've been to where they're like just giant equipment collections right uh -huh. mm -hmm. and like uh like virginia beach iron and kijak's gym like those yeah. guys those guys are are mad equipment collectors like they put my knowledge to fucking shame people yeah. people ask me questions and i'm like i don't know call kenny from bb iron he fucking knows <laughs> like you know what i mean like th those guys so um there's been a lot of gyms but i have to say and it's it's i mean obviously the relationships that i've cultivated with people at some of these gyms are special too but uh dino's gym in birmingham england mm -hmm. is just the greatest little gym it's just the it's the sh it's the most glorious shithole in the world. <laughs> Damn it! You say too many great things that we can. It's do a lot of great quotes. We'll line. do several. We'll do several. It's fine. You know? Yeah, we're gonna post so many quotes. That's beautiful. It it, it <laughs> is. It's uh anyone that's been to Body Power, um, mm -hmm. which is now mm -hmm. gonna be the Arnold UK this year. They're gonna call it the Arnold UK, uh -huh. um, but it used to be Body Power. Anyone that's been to Body Power and has been down to mm -hmm. Dino's, they know. I mean, they're there on Expo weekend, so it's like fucking busting with people now oh yeah you know, that's small space and, oh yeah right you know like that sort of shit so they're not getting like the real like day-to-day -day -to -day training but i but but they're getting the the they're definitely getting a a sample of what that gym's about and and it all goes down to who owns the gym mm -hmm. and the reason dino's is the best is because dino is the best and there's no one like him and you know personality goes a long way with me and uh I like to think that's how girls date me as my personality. Oh, of course, yes. a long way with them. <laughs> um, but uh, but but you know when you get a gym owner who's super passionate about the place and knows what's important, like uh, you know, is the music loud? Are Good. the lights on? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do we have lots of plates. Are you looking for plates? No. Like there's no shortage of iron. It's it's got that uh, super intimate old school. Like everyone's got a nickname. You know. Uh, it's Johnny the Howler and, you know, that's ah, Davey the Pusher and, you yeah. know, it's fucking yeah. Dave the Screw and everyone's got like, it's just the biggest collection of fucking, and it's like a, you know, like you, you watch those British gangster movies. Oh yeah, you know, of course. You know, like you watch oh, yeah. Snatch and yeah. Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. So yeah. coming from like North America, going to England and you're in a gym like that where there's all these blue collar guys, you're like, oh, these are these guys yeah <laughs> uh, these, are these guys like you can't understand the odd dude you're like what the yeah. fuck is this guy talking yeah. about he's kind of yeah, nod i guess like, yeah uh -huh. i love it you know they're okay. just coming in they're just coming in and like they're just regular clothes no one's dressed to impress and just some good dude pulling seven plates and you know some guys yelling and screaming benching the 150 dumbbells and you're like oh it's fucking awesome in here fucking yeah. love it it's either cranked acdc okay or uh -huh. crank techno Ooh, like obnoxious awesome. british techno like just fucking bah, 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 bah. That. and you're like you know what i actually love this <laughs> <laughs> that's why i felt like i was in miami i did like gym tour down there it was like a lot of a lot of like the cuban like techno like dance music yeah right, so, it's funny yeah yeah so so dino's gym and then this yeah. one because i know your equipment connoisseur if you had to take a compound movement for machines for legs push pull yeah. no isolation just like bang for buck these three machines that are going to take care of your body for the rest of your life right most muscle bang for buck longevity what are they brand specific and why uh great so um brand, brand specific is going to matter for a couple okay other things are more like easy to 
you know, work around. Okay. Um, you know, you're going to need a hack squat. Um, there's lots of good ones. I like an adjustable foot platform. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, however, Cybex has the best uh, footprint. Yeah. Um, so if you're in a garage gym or something, you, you want to get Cybex. A lot of Cybex equipment has a small footprint. It's fantastic for setting up your own gym. So I'm very, very much in favor of some of their stuff. Um, you know, for shoulders, the Atlantis plate loaded upright shoulder like we're just sitting pressing up and you can load the plates yep. kind of down by your knee okay atlantis's shoulder press is awesome i haven't tried everything in the world but man they make a good one i've heard and that as well it's yeah. got the two different handles on it like the yep. one set of handles are kind of 45 degree and then the yeah. one set of handles so it's like very comfortable for me um also uh you would need a chest press plate loaded chest press nautilus's plate loaded one that the explode one line the explode line oh and Atlantis makes a couple. They make the lying one and the seated one that are incredible. You'd need one of those. And um, for back, we have a Panada low row. Oh, you, that, Dustin, you love Panada. Oh, okay. We have a Panada right. low row. We got it. My, my, my partner really wanted it and we got a okay. deal on it. I'm like, oh, yeah, let's bring it in, you know. You yeah, okay, if you can find never one, tried one it. That's, that's used, then yeah. I, I, in, in, oh, yeah. So we got a new Panada low row because you got a deal. Uh, we knew some guys who were buying a bunch of stuff. So we hopped in and got a discount. So we got a Panada low row and I fucking love it. And it's super hard. Like three plates on it is like, holy shit. Like, you know, other rows, you got five, six plates on them. But yeah, like the, right. the fucking, yeah, the Panada one's awesome. Um, you know, you're going to need a leg curl. You know, any good lying leg curl would do a side back or something. You don't have to be that specific with that. I guess if you want to get a prime one, then you got some options that you can yeah. fuck with a strength curve. Yeah. Right. Um, so, yeah, you know, I mean, it's uh, the, the real basics. Um, you're not going to, you know, I guess that's hands, quads, shoulders, chest, back. Yeah. It's kind of everything you're going to need. You got it. You know, yeah. but that's a good start of a garage gym, man. <laughs> oh, I'd be a great garage gym. I'd go there. Do you, is that Panada low row is it hard enough to a point of, I'm sure you've used one of the like the original, not top loaded, side loaded, hammer mid rows. Right. That one to me is significantly harder than like the new age with the four hands. Yeah. Yeah. Is it yeah, a, yeah. Approximately the same type of strength curve we're talking about. Um. Well, that would be a mid row. Yeah. You know how with the hammer mid row, the old one, if you lean back, it actually gets lighter. Right. So the Panada one, like I lean into it with my chest on the pad, it's fucking hard. Yeah. If you lean back, there's like that little easy hitch at the back. You know what I mean? So you got to right. lean into the pad. But yeah, it's got a real good, like steady feel, you know, smooth. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, we've, we've had you on for, you know, I'm coming up on two hours. Really appreciate your time. I know oh, yeah, incredibly, no problem. You're incredibly busy, man. Yeah. We, down the road, we got to have you on again sure. to dig deeper into, into this okay. conversation, especially when it comes to just progressive overload auxiliaries for specific lifts. And, I and I'll, I'll make sure I finish the ninth season of Curve. Oh, please, by the, yes, please do because the tenth season. I, I, I want either, your opinion. So I got to finish it too. We can just okay. We can just See? completely go right. down that rabbit hole. Right, 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 right back right. to the start. There I love go. it. Right back to the I start. love it. All right, man. We'll, we'll we'll cut the recording. I'll get some stuff from you, and we'll get out of here. Okay. Thanks, guys. Absolutely. Right, Y'all, thank you for coming on.